time, but we're kind of sitting around a campfire, and uh, I got uh, several stories I want to get out of people here, but right now I want to get one out of uh, Don, who uh, 30 years ago has a story mm. about the Hoyt Peak. And Don, tell me that story about Hoyt Peak, and I want to—I want the full story when you when you talked to when you went into the gas station and when the and when the uh, medicine woman and medicine man did some training with you. I want the full story. Okay, these guys want to hear it. So My man, word, that's going to take do not two hours. Hold back, hit it. <laughs> uh, okay, when I uh, when I was in Colorado, I I seen a. Uh, a guy and he was he worked for the uh policeman or or the FBI or whatever and and uh when somebody killed someone and buried them out in the desert or whatever they'd call this guy up and he would uh take a map and he'd douse by putting a, a piece of clothing in this top he had. And, and he would find where that body was. And so, and so, of course, the guy that killed him, you know, went to prison. So he was telling me that it worked uh, the same way with, if you want to find silver, you want to find gold. And so, um, I was, I think I was 21 then, and I didn't believe it. I thought, wow, that is something, but I didn't believe in uh, what that top was, what I was looking at, and I just didn't believe it. So, I worked at Geneva Rock in Orem and so I was laid off work and I was 34 years old and I was thinking wow I wonder if that does work because I'm laid off I might as well go up in the mountains well when I went up in the mountains I was wading in uh, snow up to past my knees trying to go to a creek that was saying that there was gold there so I'd go up, but um, I'd stop at this little store, and the uh, the person that owned the store was uh, Chad Hardman. Hardman, yeah, that's right. And he asked me, he says, uh, "What are you doing? You come up here and you stop, get some goodies and that, and then." And then, where are you going? Because I see you every weekend. And I says, well, I, I told him, I says, well, I'm a map diviner and I'm not very good. I don't know what I'm doing. And, and so I'm, I was going up to this creek to see if there is gold. And uh, back then, I didn't even know how to pan. And so anyway, he was saying, um, I have a friend. So wait a minute, back up, back up. Where did, so you map divine where there's some gold up a creek and you okay, was, I and went, head up there. I where, went, where, where, what mountain was you on? Where did uh, you go? I, I was going up towards Mirror Lake. Uh, you know that, uh, the one place where you, we drove up to drive up here. Yeah. I just went a little ways past that area and I went up and so oh, he's headed towards Hoyt Peak. Well I don't know how big the mountain is, just this. Yeah. And over there. So just over there a little bit from Hoyt Peak, okay. Okay. So anyway I I read in a book that that gold in cricks uh with uh, moss, okay, it it collects. So I, it was, the creek was froze over, so I couldn't dig there. So I seen some moss, and 
got it off and took it to my brother-in-law and he panned it and he says, yeah, there's gold. So I'm thinking, oh, it works. But I could have went to any creek and done that, you know. But anyway, so I kept on going to this store and, and finally he says, I got to ask you, what are you doing up here? And so I, I told him, I says, well, I'm a, a map diviner and I'm looking uh, on the map. I've got a few places. Back then, the book of uh, Thomas Rhodes, there are 73, ma 73 mines. And I, on the map, I found them all. So, Chad told me, well, I have a very good friend that knows uh, this mountain really well. And he says, would you mind turning around and go back to uh, Helper or Heber? And I was thinking, oh, God, I, can't, I come clear up here to go... Uh, to find gold, you know. So I said, yeah, I'll go. So I went back down, and I can't remember his name, but anyway, I went down. He was expecting me, and we was talking a little bit, and then he, uh, he got a piece of paper, and he put a dot and a dot, the crick and a dot. And I, yeah, I was looking at that, and I thought, whoa. I says, wait a minute. So I went back in my uh, vehicle, and I had a map that had that. I didn't want him to see my whole map, so I tore it off. And I went back in, and I says, you mean this? And he looked at it, and he got, wow. He says, when, when the uh, snow melts, then I'm going to take you up to where a person back in 1954, 56, something like that, found a nugget the size of his fist. And, I, and so I went home and I prayed about it and... Uh, I, I just got that feeling that that guy was greedy, okay? So the following weekend, I went back up, and Chad says, uh, well, how did you like my friend? I says, well, he's all right, but I felt like he's greedy. And he says, well, yeah, he's a little greedy. And, and I told Chad, I says, I will not deal with anybody that is greedy. And to this day, I don't. So... So you're starting to tell us about Chad wanted you to meet his friends. Yeah. So if I would have went to, with his friend when I was 34 years old, I probably would have came up here and because what I'm, what I'm looking for is uh, three yellow jacket mines, and I know where they're at. So now I want, what I want to get at is you saying about uh, when he wanted you to meet the medicine man and medicine woman. Okay, so, yeah, so, uh, I met, uh, I met uh, Shoshone, and they heard about me. But a matter of fact, the, the Indian woman, she says that she had a dream that, uh, that a, a white man with blue eyes and blonde hair would come to her of uh, being a map diviner. And when I met her, she told me that, that I was the one. And I go, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing, <laughs> you know. And so, uh, so 
in Duchesne, they have a lot of places where they know where treasures are. They know where uh, a pond is and a pond is. And so they wanted me to tell them which pond. You know, so I mapped the vine it, told them there, you're right. They have a they have a place that they guard 24 hours a day, and it's a mountain, and uh, so they gave me the map, and I went and map divine it. At first, uh, I put my mark on the mountain. And I says, okay, there it is. <laughs> but then the mad, the uh, medicine man, he says, yeah, you're right there, but we want you to tell us what is in there. And I'm thinking, ooh, I don't know how to do that. And uh, so he told me, he says, just ask. And I was thinking, wow, that's easy. So the thing of it is, when I map the vine, things, it's really weird, things just comes in my mind, and then I ask about it. So, in that mountain that they guard, I told them that there was 83 gold bars at 300 pounds apiece. You slide it across, and then there's a shaft going down, and there's six rooms with rubies, gold, gold bars. It's full of it. So when I got back with them, uh, um, well, I uh, um, so the medicine man says, um, you got everything right, but you missed it. Uh, by one, there's 84 gold bars at 300 pounds apiece. And so I've been, I've been with the Shoshones, the Utes, and the last one was the Apaches. So I'll tell you the story about with the Apache. So there's a lot of people that knows about my gift as being a, a map diviner. So, so I meet a lot of people. And so um, there is a, a company in Arizona that this operation was really big. People was giving them 250,000 uh, 350,000 uh, to get this, uh, what they had going on there. So they heard about me, and of course, that time I was laid off, so. But anyway, they, they asked if I would do maps for them. So I done, and, and I told them on this one map, that I done, I says, so I don't know about this one, uh, it's a small cave, and there's really, there's, there's something in there, but it's not really valuable, or, or, you know, any mineral or whatever, and I says, I can't get what it is, I says, could you tell me what's there? And he says, oh, that's where we put all of our machinery. And I found another place, and, and they had it circled, not on what they sent me, but on their other map. And I asked him about that, and they says, oh, that's where we park our vehicles. And I says, whatever you do, do not mark on the maps, because I'll find it. So anyway, so they were so impressed with me that, that they wanted me to go to Arizona and, and go up on the project. 
But when I got to their house, I seen a lot of maps on the table, and they wanted to do wanted me to do some more maps, and I blew up. I says, "You just do what I gave you, and you'll find what you're looking for." And and I says, "All I want to do is go back to Utah." So the next day, I I came back, and so. Okay, this is where the Apache comes in. So I met this Apache, and uh, I was telling her, I, you know, I've done some maps in Arizona, and she says, well, I'd like to see them. So I had copies of what I'd done with them. I always do a copy to keep. And so I was showing her, and she says, she looked at me, and she says, you're the one. I says, what do you mean by that? And she says, that uh, company, right now we're in a lawsuit with them because they're on Indian reservation and their, uh, their liquid or whatever they're using has drained into our drinking water and a lot of them died. And and uh, I said, you know what? I went, I went just to their house, and I didn't want nothing to do with them because I felt they were greedy. I didn't want nothing to do with them. And and she says, um, there's a check that was in your name, and you cashed it. And I says, nope, that was forgery. I didn't want nothing of it, but um, we became really good friends after that. But anyway, so I've met, I've done maps for people in Colorado. Uh, I'm, uh, it's been unreal that just things can just come in my mind and it's there. So, and with that said, you know, I know the full story, and you left a lot out, and I guess I can understand why, but it makes your story a lot interesting if they knew their whole story, but I guess they're not going to get it. And so with that said, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> now tell us.